Hi everyone, New Hampshire Hobby Logger here. Well, today we're going to talk about the uh, sawdust gasifier that I have in the shop. Um, it's a uh, conifer number 12 sawdust burner, as you can see. Um, I've had a couple of people that were sort of interested in it, sort of, and I figured I'd run a little video on it to show them what it was all about. Most people have never seen anything like this. It uh, burns sawdust. It's uh, let me back out of this a little. And we make a lot of sawdust here uh, in our firewood operation, so uh, we're not on uh, lacking any fuel at all. Now, what this thing really needs uh, to operate is uh, it doesn't need any power at all. It relies on gravity, and around this part of the country, that tends to work pretty well. And uh, it also has to have a real good draft to keep this thing, uh, uh, the gas going in the right direction. It's a true gasifier. So it's uh, super heating the wood that's uh, the sawdust that's coming down in it, and it drives the gas through the system. And there's a secondary ignition that uh, takes place behind this in that heat exchanger. So I'm going to give you a little quick. I did, drew out a little kind of schematic here of what this thing is. Let me get in here, and I'll explain it to you a little bit before we start to get into it have a little more understanding of what's going on with this thing. All right, I'll get my pointer out. Now you'll notice <coughs> this is about the a side view of the of the uh, the riggy there. Here's the uh, the door that we were looking at and there's a little flapper here which is the primary uh, the primary air intake. The sawdust is uh, in a feed tube that's up above here. And that comes down through, and you'll notice that it comes down kind of in a wedge. This is a grate that's uh, right here. And the sawdust comes, actually it comes down that grate like that, so it's at an angle. And the sawdust comes down against this, and it's lit on this back side here, and it drives this uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is uh, all pre-ignited and, and uh, burning right here, but it drives that heat through the sawdust wedge, and that's what superheats the wood, drives the gas out of it, and then it's all funneled down through here. The draft is pulling it all through here, and right here is a secondary air uh, intake, and that uh, pulls the air through here, and it comes in here and this is where the ignition is in the combustion zone down in here and it gets hot so the hotter it gets the, the harder the draft pulls and it pulls it all up through the uh, heat exchanger here which is an old coal furnace and then it's up and out the flue and that's the uh, source of the draft so this thing was made by uh, my understanding is the Hearn Iron Works out in Idaho. And there's a casting on the door that says Western Foundry in Portland, Oregon. Now, I'm not sure if they just make the door or, or whatever. But the uh, unit itself is um, all the plates on it are cast iron. The tops, the sides, the insides, all the, the shakers and the grates and everything. Um, they're all cast iron to take the heat. Um, on this edge right here, on the top and the, the sides um, and the back end, it's a three, uh, two inch uh, refractory. It's almost, they're almost like big, uh, well, one single piece brick in there. It's all hand ca or cast um, so it'll take the, take the heat in there. And uh, like I say, I think it really gets wicked hot. Uh, it's, I think it's rated at 312,000 BTUs, which is about enough to run three houses in the winter time. In fact, that snowman, that uh, um, heat exchanger in the back, um, one of the old donut things there, came out of a coal cellar uh, furnace there somewhere along the line, and that's all hand cast refractory on the inside of it uh, on the lower section there so that the, uh, that'll, that'll take the heat 
and um, I'll get that thing cherry red, uh, almost to the point you think it's going to melt and into a big puddle on the floor. So I have to shut it down, and the only way you do that is let it run out of, out of uh, um, fuel. So you just let it uh, burn everything that it's got in it, and then it will obviously shut down now then because it doesn't have any, any fuel to go by. Now I'm going to pop the camera off of here a little bit. Um, when I installed this thing, um, I poured that section of the floor um, specifically for this thing. There's an ash pit underneath it, um, so I cast the floor. Let me run this off of here. Okay, so I... cast this floor, I poured the floor with, uh, um, with this in mind, so the outside of the, the uh, outside edge of this thing just barely straddle that floor. Now there's a pit underneath there, and that's uh, about, I think it's eight inches deep. And right down there I've got some steel plates that are over the, over the top of it, and they slide right up underneath the, the uh, right under the edges of the, uh, the furnace. Let me open up the door here, and that's the same on both sides. So we've got a shaker grate on on the inside. Also, I've taken some of the things out of here so that you, we can have a look at it. There's the uh, the handle for the shaker, and that operates. These guys right here. So we're ready. To, keep in mind now. This is all. Uh, um, So when the ash gets building up on the thing there, you just give that a rack and it drops the ash down in there and keeps on going so it doesn't build up. There's quite a bit of fly ash that uh, um, this thing uh, creates and I have just cleaned this thing out from a year's worth of, uh, it's very efficient and uh, get a light in there. So you can see what it looks like down in the down in the back there, and it doesn't make a whole lot of ash. You can, I've burned about 15 cubic yards of material of uh, sawdust. That's a, a whole dumpster's worth, and that's all the fly ash that I've got out of this whole thing, and that is not very much. That's 15 inches. And it's uh, about four inches high. So, as you can see, not very much residue at all. There might be five or ten gallons worth of a uh, 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 five gallon pail, there might be two of them down in the ash pit. So, I have to pull those panels off um, every so often. I think I've done it twice since I've owned it. But I take these, slide these right out of here, and you can dig out the, the ash and whatnot and, and uh, put that in your garden because that is real good for the, for the garden. It likes that. It's a lot. And, um, so I'm going to put this together, and we're going to have a little demonstration on what it does. In fact, I'll give you a quick little walk around here if I can get this thing to follow me. I've got it plugged in because I think I'm going to undo it overload the battery here if I don't so I've got a cord I've got to take along with me but that's the uh, that's the heat exchanger and that uh, bent old twisted up thing there that was in a uh, uh, stove I made years ago and I was going to plumb some hot water through it and I never got around to doing that but um, this thing is uh, needs to be re resealed again it's got some cracks on the uh, where all the sections go together and I just took some uh, um, refractory and I sealed that all up but for what we got to do today it'll still be fine so the uh, the top here I've got it all um, covered over because that's and that's all cement board around the sides and everything and it's insulated on the back side of it so I can uh, put a big blower fan right there that sits up in here on the top and it uh, circulates the, the hot air 
through the shop. So it goes up the, uh, the pipe into that big wood stove that I have there. And I've got everything plumbed into that. I've got a rocket stove that's, that uh, does real well, likes burning pellets, except I think I've got to take it apart. I think it burned it right out on the inside. It got so hot. So that's, but that's my big manifold. That, that I can put a lot of uh, wood in there. I put a quarter of a quarter at a time in that big puppy behind there. And, and um, that helps keep the, the shop lit. So there are two big doors on there, 20 inch doors. Uh, and we got to keep that thing fit. But this is the big shop. This is 20 feet to the rafters. It's a uh, 40 by 60. And I got the old car up there on the lift. And I got just about everything a guy could want in his barn here. So it makes it pretty nice to be able to, to, to work in here. I got a nice big old Lincoln welder here, MIG welder, and a plasma cutter, and all oh, the torches are over there. Oh my god, I got more stuff than I need to do with here. So I got a vertical sander, and I just picked up this little guy the other day so I can start bending some, making combs and whatnot. So. And then we got the big battery bank in here. If we lose power, we can, and uh, the inverters sitting underneath there has 3,000 watt inverter. So let's get back to this thing here. I'm going to put the camera on the stand and put this thing together. What I'm going to have to do is I've already started a fire in the, uh, in the woods, in the big manifold heater there. And the reason I do that is that I don't want to build up any gas and have it accumulate in the uh, heat exchanger. Um, when that happens and it is done quite uh, uh, often enough, um, you get quite a mini explosion through here. In fact, it's enough to blow the door off and send embers right across the uh, floor. If I usually keep a uh, water hose uh, all ready to go. I got a couple of fire extinguishers around here too, but I had to hose the floor down once, but nothing too serious. I try to keep everything, uh, oh, no combustibles in the way of it. So I'm going to slide the, uh, the plates back in. Um, this plate, right, let me zoom back into that. This plate, right here is this one and that that tends to wedge the uh, sawdust down and and uh, get it into this uh, position here and it goes across the grates and we get the, the flow going here we start a fire right in here uh, out of this kindling and we'll start a little fire right on that and that'll start to combust the sawdust right here now this is a, a swinging baffle that is uh, I, didn't, I didn't really show you that before but this is what limits the, uh, the amount of fuel that's going through there all the time. And it's also the backstop for the air, secondary air that comes in and it has to, this, and it swings back and forth uh, to allow the saw 